Right, we've just rocked up to Hordle Lakes. I'm here with Andy Lobel and we're going to be doing some specimen perch fishing. Over the past couple of months, both myself and Andy have enjoyed some great sport fishing a selection of commercial fisheries for perch. This is a style of fishing that I've grown very fond of over the past couple of years and seeing a big perch on the bank is always a very special moment for me. And it's this that has addictively caused me to fish for perch solidly for the past three months. I hope in this video that we'll be able to give you a better understanding of how both me and Andy go about targeting specimen perch from commercial fisheries. After a quick walk around Bob's Lake we decided on a couple of swims that were fairly central around the area of the lake that generally holds the larger numbers of perch. So it's simply just a case of getting our gear set up, getting a freshly mounted king prawn lowered into place and hopefully in front of a lovely two pound plus stripey. Right then Andy, why don't you talk us through this wide array of bait that we've got in front of us. Yeah, well I brought along a selection of baits. I know it's quite daunting, but I wanted to show the angler what they could be using to try and catch their PV perch. Nice, so to start with, a really basic bait that most people are going to be familiar with. Absolutely. Good old red maggot. Perch love them. They're nice and wriggly, good movement, um, and you can use them in your ground bait and as loose feed. Fantastic, and as an alternative we've also got there. If you're worried about them wriggling out of your swim, you can always have dead maggots. Freeze them is the ideal way to do that in a nice sealed bag. Yep, lovely. And worms. Most people are going to be again pretty familiar with using worms as a hook bait for perch. Definitely. We've got the dendrobina, nice and small, great to be chopped up and thrown in with your ground bait. Yep. You've got your lobworms. These can also be chopped up but also can be used as a, an alternative hook bait. Yep. Well okay. actually I say we've got two worms. We've actually got three. We've also got the ragworm there. Yeah, this um, is um, one that you've been using a lot, isn't it, Chris? Yeah, doing a bit of sea fishing, you know, chop that up, loads of liquid, loads of attractants going to be coming out. Again, same as the worms, chop them all up, put them in your ground bait, it's going to be catching you loads of fish. Um, Definitely. Caster? Caster, yeah, always good. Matchman love it. Um, seems to catch quite a few good perch. Yep. And so in your ground bait as an attractor or as loose feed again. Yeah, it's nice and colourful, isn't it, on the bottom? Different colours there. It's uh, definitely going to bring fish in. And finally, the main hook bait that we've been using. We love them the prawns and not trying to give a plug to Iceland but they're the cheapest <laughs> and the best I've found so yeah. some good prawns okay yeah, fantastic hook bait also I found them really good in any water that has any sort of crayfish in them I'm sure that the perch are feeding on them yeah and it's just almost like a natural food source to them the prawns now so yeah, uh, absolutely additives then Andy wow <laughs> where, where do you want to start um, anything fishy Yep. Uh, along those lines is going to be good so it can be whether it be like a krill amino um, a blood worm I think you've got some krill dust yeah krill extract, extract yeah um, snails fish pro uh, all these things can be added we've even got um, some worm extract here which can be sprayed onto your hook baits Fantastic. so yeah. if you think it's fishy it should work so I suppose you're really only limited with your imagination on this you know if it's fishy get it in your bait Get it on any of these hook baits that we've shown you here and you're going to be catching yourself perch from any commercial fishery. Well here we are, we finally had one, two pound on the nose, really positive bite and a cracking fish. Now we're going to get the rods back out and hopefully we'll have some more for the camera soon. Right, 
Right, so I'm just going to talk you through the ground bait mix that I've been using for these perch down here at Hordle. I've been doing a lot of sea fishing over the last couple of years and we use ragworm as bait. Uh, something that you wouldn't see in a lot of commercial fisheries, but uh, I've noticed that it's got a lot of acids, a lot of sugars in it that are going to be really attractive to the perch. So I'm just popping them in a bait tub and I'll cut them up really finely, almost into a liquid. Once I've cut that up, I'm just adding a handful of sea compost just to absorb all that liquid and allow me to boil it into the swim. And then if you wanted to, you could add a few extracts. I normally add the krill extract to it just to give it even more of a boost. So uh, that's my ground bait mix. Let's go and ball something in the margins and see if we can catch some perch. Well there we are, first perch for me, switch over to a float fish lobworm, one of the glow in the dark ones, the light's just starting to fade now and I'm sure we're going to get some more throughout the night, I'm really really pleased to finally get my first one for the camera, awesome. Uh, not what we came for at all, but proof that carp quite happily and munch a prawn as well. That gave a really good fight on very light gear. The sonic rod on the one and a half pound test curve put to its max and uh, a four pound hook link, six pound mainline. You know, good fight, great fun, but it's getting that to that time when the perch are starting to bite. So I'll put this back and get the prawns back out again. Right, I'm just going to talk you through how I've got the rod set up for good bite indication. I've got the rod tip always facing towards the rig. I've got a long drop on a very light bobbin and I've got an open bail arm fished on a line clip. All these things are going to minimise the resistance felt by a perch and hopefully increase our chances in landing the fish. Well, just starting to lose the light now. I'm into my second perch. I unfortunately lost one about five minutes ago and that was due to the hook point. Ooh. Just pulling inside, oh it's a good fish. Come on. Yes. yes! Yeah, like I said, just lost one. Unfortunately the hook point had pulled inside the prawn on the strike. But looks like we've got another one to make up. Well done. Cheers mate. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yes. Let's go and see how much this weighs and uh, get it back. Awesome. Got that. You imagine that with a barbed hook. I know. That's why we use the barbless, really important. Come in. There we go. Pop! Yep. He's out. Awesome. Look how fat that fish is. Ready to spawn. He's going to go... 2.5. Two 2.5. Five. Yeah. Not nice. bad. Another good fish. They're getting bigger. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right, well there we are after the disappointment of losing that earlier fish. Introducing a few more maggots into the swim, just a couple of handfuls over each rod. And uh, Andy's rods are bleeping. You're in, you're in, you're in, you've got to go. It's all kicking off down here at the moment. Go on, Paul, go and get it. Oh, come on. Well, there we are, it's all a bit manic at the moment. We've got Andy's rods going off, my rods going off. We just introduced more maggots over the spot, more of the compost ground bait with the ragworm in it. And uh, it's just that time now where everything's switching on. We're getting loads of indications that perch are in the swim. So uh, let's get this fish back, see if we can get some more. Well, that's knocks on both rods now. There's fish in the area of some description. I just, just want a decent fish in the net start catching up with Chris. Well done Chris. When it kicks off it kicks off, is that right? <laughs> That's the saying mate. <laughs> oh yes. This is going to be your hat trick of twos. Right here we go, we're under you there mate, just keep it up. Yeah. Sweet. Awesome. That's got to be another well, that's, that's a two. That's a two pounder. <laughs> <laughs> well done buddy. Sweet mate. Right, that's brilliant. I want to get my other rods down. So okay. Let's lay that one in the margin a minute. Calm down a minute, let's all kick it off. Crazy, crazy stuff down here all the way. There we go. Pop. That's one. Lovely job. 
Not a cracking perch. Awesome, nice look at the there. size of it. Right. Well, there we are. The action just keeps on coming. I can't believe you haven't had one yet, Andy. Every time I get a fish <laughs> on the mat, either one or both of his rods are both having savage liners on them. Uh, it just really is kicking off at the moment. And uh, I've just been fortunate that my rods have been the ones, but uh, sure it's only a matter of time, mate, before you land. Let's hope so. Well, I am very happy for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> However, I do need to get well, something. Last time on that. you caught more, so this is my turn. This is true. <laughs> I've, I've taught you well. <laughs> awesome. But, anyways, I think we'll get this one back, and it's my turn to get a fish on the mat. Another mid two. Fantastic. Nah, this is carp, oh. surely. Oh well. You can tell the carp are active now. They're starting to warm up and <laughs> they seem to take a liking to the prawns on this trip. It's not just me then. <laughs> well what's that? Two bream and this would be the third carp. Third carp, yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Another fish, fantastic. Oh. Right, well there we are, another lovely two pound perch. I've had a really, really productive night. I haven't stopped for the last three or four hours. I've been catching non-stop, uh, mostly carp, mind you, um, but a couple of perch mixed in. I've just got to keep plodding through the carp if I have to catch them to keep catching lovely perch like this, then so be it. But a really, really pretty perch. Every single fish has been over two pound. Really, really pleased. Great session so far. Let's slip this one back and get some more. Well, morning finally came and we've been up all night catching carp, bream and roach that were all regularly taking our large king prawn hook baits. But perseverance saw our efforts rewarded in the early hours of the morning catching five perch including this lovely brace of hard fighting stripies. I'm going to run you through the rig that I've been using today for my perch fishing. Let's start with the main line. I'm using a five pound fast sinking mono. To this, I've got a one and a half ounce square pair lead with a large swivel. This is to allow good free movement up and down the line. I've then got buffer bead, small swivel, an anti-tangle sleeve to reduce any risk of tangles when casting. And then my hook length of about 12 to 15 inches long is a fluorocarbon hook link of four pound. The fluorocarbon makes sure that it's invisible to the fish. At the end of this, the business end, I have a nice, large, barbless, wide gate hook. And the point on these turns in quite a lot. Because it's barbless, the point turning in allows for it to have a better hook hold in the fish's mouth. And that's my setup. And with having that, you have a lot less resistance, a lot less visibility to the fish, and also a lot less tangles. Well, as you can see, a change of methods for me. The ledger rods have gone quiet, probably because of the bright sunshine that we've now got. Um, I like to fish the float rod. It allows me to get into snaggy little areas with shade and cover where the perch are gonna be holding up in this bright sunshine. I'm literally just taking a float rod, a landing net, some lobworms for hook baits, and I'm chopping some of those up for loose feed. So I'm just gonna walk up and down the lake now, putting my float into some likely looking areas. The float rod as well, but also. Well, there we are, putting the plan into action. Float fish lobworm, chop lobworm over the top, fishing right down the edge. 
only literally two or three inches away from the bank in about a foot of water and uh, sure enough the perch was lurking under the cover we've caught another lovely fish really really pleased let's see if we can stalk out another couple awesome Well there we go, another lobworm mounted and ready to go on the float rod. Just a little tip for you, if you are finding it slow when you're fishing with lobworms, just by cutting the tail off the worm, you can often add much more scent into the water and get yourself a bite much quicker. Once I cast it out into the swim, I'm not just going to leave it there. Periodically, every couple of minutes, I'm just going to twitch it to the right or to the left, just to impart more movement into the worm and hopefully entice a perch into snatching at the bait and getting me a bite. Grab the net. Well, still not the desired species. Only had one perch, another cracking carp, and a light gear, six pound line, four pound hook link, and a really light rod. Absolutely great fun. Just hoping as the day goes on, I might be able to get some more two pound perch like Chris has had. Fingers crossed. There's been a bit of a lull in action at the moment, so we thought it was a really good opportunity to let you know why we've chosen some of our spots for fishing for the perch. Yeah, I suppose there's a few different tricks that you can use for fishing any commercial fishery to sort of choose the better swims for the perch, you know. Most lakes, as you know, Andy, you know, will have areas of, of the lake that will produce more perch or produce the bigger perch, depending on what you're after. Um, yeah. But we've looked at match results, we've looked at what previous anglers have been catching and where they've been catching them from and also just looking at this sort of side of the lake you've got all the features you know big features you've got a big tree to the left you've got the monk yep. straight in front of you which is a great area Absolutely. Um, and then some trees and some reeds to the right so you've got a variety of different features on an area of the lake that's been producing fish yep. um, that's why we picked this sort of area of the lake it, it just produces a lot of perch and I myself have sort of been here over the last two or three weeks catching a fair few perch, so yeah. No, absolutely, and I think our swim choices have been good. Yours has been more fortunate this time round. Yeah, it's, but just, it's one of them, you know, that swim one day will be the one and then... No, absolutely, you can't have it all, all the time. No, but I was happy with, I've got a tree, big tree in my swim. Um, it's great overhang and you can get your bait just tucked underneath the overhanging branches there. And there has been plenty of action. I've got one over, as you mentioned, the monk. I've got one over by the monk. Great holding spot for the perch on this lake. Yeah, any sort of structure, they're yeah. going to be around it and uh, maybe bringing some food into the water or disturbing the bottom in some way. It's going to be attracting silverfish into the area and therefore the perch are going to come in after them. Absolutely. So, uh, um, yeah, my, my side's not, not as visual, I suppose. You know, I'm, I've had a lead about in the swim previously and I know that I've got quite a lot of marginal depth there. I think. I don't know whether it was when they made the swims, but there's almost like a concrete drop off on okay. one of them. So if you're leading about, you can find it sort of just drop suddenly, and that's where I've been putting my bait. Just, I just feel again it's an area that perch could possibly ambush the prey fish. Yeah. Um, to the left, just a, a standard reed bed. You know, perch love reeds, they're going to be in and out of them, trying to hunt, hunt the prey. So uh, yeah, Absolutely. Four, four features in the two swims that we're fishing Absolutely. that really are prime areas that we want to be looking for on any commercial fishery to catch perch. Wonderful, but there's also, what we've missed out here, is the opportunity of catching perch in open water as well. Yeah, that's true. Um, and by using a marker float and being able to spod or spom out your bait, yeah. uh, also can give you an edge sometimes where maybe things are slow in the margin, um, yeah. especially if you know areas that hold uh, a lot of bait fish, smaller fish, yeah. they can be ideal areas 
to uh, put your bait out to and I've had some good fish in the past. Yeah, when we fished Alderwood Ponds last year, um, although predominantly we were fishing the margins because that's where most of the features are on commercial fisheries, yeah. we did have one rod which was a bit further out which we spotted to yeah. and produced it, did it, am I right in saying, did it produce the biggest fish? It produced the biggest fish at our time and I, yeah, numerous three pound fish yeah. out of that How one many well. people are going to do that? You know, when people perch fish, they're normally associating it with margin fishing which yeah. is normally true but there's always sort of exceptions to that rule and uh, in that case you know it really paid off for you didn't it absolutely excellent well hopefully that gives you an idea of what we look for in sort of swims and, and where we're going to be casting our rigs when we're targeting perch on commercial fisheries I'm just going to run through how to hook your prawn onto your wide gape hook for this perch fishing. To start with, the first way is to take the tail end of your prawn and take the hook just into the end of it, which gives you maximum point showing through the prawn. Okay, just to finish that off, if you think the hook bait is a bit too big, you can then nick part of it off, which gives you a nice presentation. The second way, is to get your prawn and instead of going through the tail like we just did we'll go through the fat end and so just nicking your hook through it comes up nicely like that still with maximum hook point showing to finish this off and this works especially well if you're casting a distance or if you just want that security that your bait's going to stay on in the margin is get a little bit of rubber red rubber is always good nick it through like so and that finishes your bait off beautifully. We've got a fish on, I've just moved swims and uh, hoping that with the light fading and the change of swim I might get in amongst some perch and we've done it. I don't think it's the biggest, but it's certainly a perch. Here we go. Yes, got it. Right, well there we are, what a fantastic way to end our session down here at Hordle Lakes after some specimen perch. We've had a really great trip, not just catching perch, we're catching a multitude of species. The lake really is starting to warm up now and the fish are moving all over the place. So uh, loads of species caught, loads of fun had and uh, it's been great fishing with you again Andy. Likewise Chris and till our next adventure, let's enjoy. Cheers, bye bye.